In this tutorial, we're going to cover the priority system and how to use it to get the most out of your duplicates because priorities, they're one of those subjects in which there are so many opinions and almost no consensus. Now, the, the recent patch that's been put out has given a, a nice window into priorities and I've found a system that worked for me uh, a while back and the priority system visibility now has not changed my opinion on that. Uh, so. In this, I'm just going to go through my reasoning behind, behind why I use the priority system I do, the mechanics of how it works, and how the system I use is implemented. Now, uh, the first thing we want to go over is what your limitations are and what you want to actually aim for. Now, this is all really sort of based around a couple of things. One is the dig function. This is one of those functions you will be using a lot at the start and usually in conjunction with build commands. If you overlay a brick, say a, a floor tile, over a piece of dirt, that's technically a dual function command. It is a, a dig command and a build. It's two separate commands in one. However, if you're just laying a dig command, it will default to level five, no matter what you do. And what I mean by that is, if I set this to level seven, play some dig commands, go away, and then I come back in to lay another dig command, it has defaulted back to five. Which means if you're placing all your priorities above five, that means every time you go to place a dig command, you're going to have to place an extra mouse click just to get the dig command function operated on in a reasonable time frame. Then we have the secondary thing, which is buildings themselves. Uh, deodorizers are a good example, I suppose. When you place a building, you can actually set this priority here. And what this will do is set how important it is to build that building. And not only that, it changes the priorities for all your buildings permanently. So if I go to build, say, a med bay after that, it will also be set to level 7. Once you change this here, it's permanent for every building you build from then on. So we can actually modify this. However, there's also a downside to that as well. Um, even if we do, say, place our deodorizer build at level 7, and we say, hey, build that deodorizer for us. The moment that deodorizer is finished, the deodorizers have their own priority because they need to have materials delivered to them. They will default to level 5. That's that, that's just it. Every building defaults to level 5. Everything that needs actual some sort of functioning. So what we need to realize here is everything is going to pretty much default to level 5. Lots of things are going to default to level 5. You kind of have to work around that and work target towards having level 5 as your default commands for everything you're doing. Now, the next thing to look at is the actual priorities themselves and how they affect the mechanics of the game. Right here we have the most common misconception about priorities. It's the one that will confuse most everyone the most. In this scenario we have Ashkan here who has plus one in storage. Plus one storage priority, everything else is just standard. And we have an emergency scenario here where Devon has got his head trapped in a block because he's a stupid builder. Now, these are level 9 deconstruction commands because I want to get Devon out of there before he suffocates and dies. However, drawing for Ashkan's attention, we have a level 1 sweep, well, a level 1 tidy up command or storage command, and a level 1 sweep command. So, two level 1 commands versus save this person's life. And, um, yep, yeah, that's right, Ashkan, just let him die. Let him die. So what, what the biggest confusion you're going to get on priorities is people think this just pranks up the priority by one or two. No. It adds plus, well, we can see now for sure that it adds plus 10 to the dude list. So if you look at Ashkan here, total priority 41.13 for that, and the deconstruct has 39.4. Effectively, putting the storage priority on high or adding a, a plus one arrow to something adds plus 10 to its priority. The simplest way to think about it is this. If you put a storage priority up by one or any priority up by one, that's all they're going to do. It doesn't matter what you set the priorities to anywhere else. Well, one exception. You can have a level... If you have a, a digger and you have his dig command at plus one and there is a level nine command for anything else, won't make a difference. A plus one dig command will override all of that. A plus one dig command on the opposite side of the map will override every other command. So what you need to realize is when you start playing around with these priorities, anything you put up by plus one 
they will do nothing else but those until those are ticked off. Unless you have a plus two somewhere like say in art, something like that. In that case, they will do all the art projects first, then they'll do build and dig, and then after that, they'll think about the other ones. That's how it works. So to get around this, of course, there is the new function they've introduced in the last patch, which is actually quite handy. And that is the emergency function. So we'll just put store, well, put supply back up again. And what we will do here is we're going to hit the emergency, emergency deconstruct button thingy. Ooh. Oh, it hasn't actually updated yet. We'll put this also on emergency too. And they jump on top of it. Basically that emergency function maxes the priority out at 300 points on whatever you give that emergency function to. So now, no matter who's around, no matter what their priorities are set to, you can use the emergency function to actually override all their priority system. But unless you're willing to break out that emergency function all the time, the way you have to think of priorities, once they've got a point in it, that's all they'll do. Think of it that way. And the only way to beat one point in this is have the two points in something else. All right, so now we know how the mechanics of this works, and we know what we want to aim for. Level 5, pretty much across the board on everything. Level 4 and level 5 commands will use a bit of... Level 4 and 6 will probably use occasionally, but we kind of want to default everything to level 5 just to cut down on the amount of times we have to go back and change priorities. Uh, for example, when I build a deodorizer, I want to just leave them all at level 5 and have them actually serviced in a reasonable time frame. I don't want to queue up 10 or 15 deodorizers and then an hour later I come back and nothing's happened after they've been built because their priority is level 5 and everything needs to be level 7 or it won't get looked at. So, with all of that in place, here's the, the basics of how it works. It's just the specialization of labor to make sure everything gets done. Now, this is a dug. Dugs basically have plus 1 to build and dig. I default them to this because I just want them building and digging. They're there to do their construction jobs. And unless all of that's done, they're not going to look at anything else. And that's the way it should be. Now, of course, you're wondering, well, how are you going to get anything else done? How is life support going to work? How is uh, the base going to be maintained? Well, that's where your second duplicate type comes in, and that's dogs' bodies. Dogs' bodies, all I've done is decreased the build and dig on them. I've just well, gotten rid of it. They don't build and dig unless everything else is done. Unless every other chore is done, they don't even look at it. Now, there are a few exceptions here you'll notice. For example, uh, I have ranching crossed off for everyone except people who specialize in it. Um, also, farming is crossed off for everyone except dog's body. Uh, research is crossed off for everyone except I do have a, a specialist researcher. Uh, in fact, in this game it was brains here, but all my research is done. And uh, finally, cook is crossed off for everyone, except for the dog's body too. So the dog's body is there to do the cooking, the cleaning, the farming, all of that. that that's their purpose. Their job is to stay inside the base and take care of all the little maintenance tasks. Um, they just The only things they won't look at are art, research, and ranching, because they're very time-consuming. The operate function, um, normally I let them do, I do let them operate a machines, but I've turned it off in this instance because of uh, some stuff that goes on in the game later. Uh, I, there's no need to cover that, but by and large, they just don't want to be building and digging, and that should be their last resort, is building and digging. In other words, everything else should be maintained and taken care of. Now, you may be worried that, well, will my oxygen diffusers get topped up in time if they're left at level 5? Well, it, there's a little bit of a, a workaround here in place. If you have five duplicates and one oxygen diffuser, the oxygen diffuser will produce exactly enough oxygen to keep them oxygenated. Don't do that. Build two oxygen diffusers. If an oxygen diffuser overpressurizes, it stops functioning. You'll waste a little bit of electricity here and there when it hits its um, overpressurization mark, but it's honestly a very small amount. You're better off having a few extra oxygen diffusers around the place. Most of the time, they'll save energy and turn off when they need to. The rest of the time when they're actually uh, running out of algae, they'll actually call for more algae when they're half empty. So just put in a few extra oxygen diffusers, it wouldn't be, it shouldn't be a problem. The only things you'll, and basically you're gonna be leaving most of their things at level five, the only ones you're actually be putting up to level six for your dog's body will be say cooking, because you wanna make sure that gets done. Uh, something like your water sieve is usually quite essential and internal power generators those things are usually the only three you're probably going to put up to level six and everything else you leave at level five and I even put the compost down to level four once I get rid of the 
uh, latrines and switch over to actual plum toilets. That's the two main duplicate types you're going to want to look at. Basically a, a dig dog who does the digging and building and then a dog's body who does most of the general labor except for art, research and ranching. Uh, also operate as well to be honest we, we don't really want them doing that too much. But uh, next up you've got your we're going to cover beasties. These are your basic ranchers. Now this is pretty much a playstyle dependent uh, variant. I do use ranching because I like the water free food source it provides so I usually run with a couple of ranchers. And in them it's even simpler than anything else. I stick up ranching by two. Uh, that art thing was done because they were getting involved in art and they should have been at the time but by and large you just stick up ranching by two and leave everything else at default. Ranching is very labor intensive. One duplicate can manage about 11 or 12 critters depending on how far from base the ranch is. So most of the time they're going to be spending their entire time grooming or hugging eggs. If they have any spare time at all, they can pretty much pick whatever is nearby. They're, they're not going to have much time to do it before they're going to be called back to lunch anyway. Now, those three are the most varied types. After that, they're all just variants on the same type. For example, Brain's dog here is basically just a dog, except he has plus two in research as well as plus one in building and digging. This means if I queue up some research, he will jump on that straight away, and only if all the research is done will he actually help out with the building and digging. Most duplicates should be prioritizing building and digging because that's what they're going to need to do. Next up is the art dog. Uh, just another variant on the dog, plus one to build and dig, plus two to art. The reason I make him, uh, I have a dedicated artist, it's not highly essential, but normally you're only going to have one artist in the early mid game, or someone who's trained up to be a good artist, and you want to make sure that they're the ones doing all the artwork. So I've set their priority high, and usually I disable the art for everyone else, at least for a time, until everyone else catches up in that. This makes sure that this duplicate gets really high creativity from having lots of practice at art, and they'll do it faster and just more efficiently. Now, the final and probably the most important duplicate type is the dig is the Tinker Dog. Now, the Tinker Dog here basically has Operate plus 2 and Build and Dig plus 1. These are very important duplicates. Uh, I can't really stress it enough. They're the ones that are going to be operating your rock granulators, your metal refineries, your oil refineries, basically all the machines around the map. If they're in the middle of doing a build and constructing command and then an oil well down the bottom of the map starts to overpressurize, they'll pop off and go depressurize that sucker and they'll do it really fast because their tinkering skills will develop quite quickly because, they'll spend, because they will spend most of their times on machines. Now, the... The last variant I want to mention, uh, it, it will depend on your playstyle, is a dog's body out. The only difference between a dog's body in and a dog's body out is I have a tendency on my bases to seal them in. So this is a, a, the internal base where the duplicates basically live, eat, and do their basics. And then I only have one exit. Uh, so if you look at the, the exits here, well, there's technically two, but they're configured identically. The dog's body is not allowed outside. They are an inside dog's body. They cook, they clean, they take care of the internals of the base, but they don't leave. I don't want them going outside, running to the opposite side of the map to harvest a crop when there's food that needs cooking. So to uh, mitigate them not being able to do their job outside, I have included a dog's body out. The dog's body out, their job is to go outside the base and bring back the supplies necessary to keep the internals of the base running. Their build and dig is downgraded, same as everyone else. However, no cooking, no art, no ranching, I've downgraded operate by one as well, and uh, no research. They're there to just take care of all the external stuff, basically bring stuff from outside the main base to inside the main base for my duplicate. The only one thing I have cranked up, and this is from experience, was life support. Namely for deodorizers and water sieves. Deodorizers are something normally when you place them down, you want them filled up so you can start decontaminating that oxygen sooner rather than later. And if you don't put this up, they'll have a tendency to take care of supply commands. And supply commands are very time consuming. Usually they're going to try to fill 20 tons into something. Uh, in the time they're doing that, they could top up several deodorizers and water sieves. And since water sieves and deodorizers are usually quite useful, that's why I put life support up by one. That's their only difference to a regular dog's body is life support plus one. Now using this system, I've been using this from the start of this game, which came out in the last patch. It, it scales wonderfully from early to late game. 
your duplicants do the jobs they're supposed to do. When I place a build or dig command, it gets done. All the life support functions get taken care of, and I've never had any emergency scenarios where something didn't get done in time and duf duplicants started to suffocate or run out or something. Now, that said, there are, of course, compromises you're making here. The main compromise is, well, how are you going to get sweeping done? You, you've no duplicants that really prioritize it except your dog's bodies, and they're kind of stretched thin taking care of all the basics. They'll be taking care of the farming, the cooking, the cleaning. When it comes to sweep commands, just don't do them. Uh, for example, if you want to clean out your toiletry area and make get rid of all the debris so you can decor the place up, uh, Swiss cheese it. Chop out half the tiles. Dirt falls down. Replace those tiles. Chop out the other half of the tiles. Rest of the debris falls down. Replace those tiles. Boom. Room is clean. Just plan ahead and top down, drop all the dirt down to the bottom of your base at the start. Now, with all that said, there's still other things that you will need supplied occasionally. For example, this would be perfect, is uh, this kiln over here requires ceramic. Uh, I've kind of cut back on ceramic production, I don't need it anymore, but I normally left this around level 4, as a level 4 refill command. Now, of course, the dog's body out is the only dog's body that can get out this far, and this dog's body is, not, is going to have a lot of competing, competing demands for their attention. And as such, they're not really going to be able to fill this up very often. So normally what I will do is after I do two or three construction projects and this runs out, I stop building and constructing. Once you stop building and constructing, all these duplicates here, dig dog, dog's body, brains, uh, all the dugs, since they have no build or dig commands left to do, they'll basically default back to doing everything else. They basically become dog's bodies. Once I am not building and digging, they'll get around to stocking everything up. Now, just to try and hammer this home, this is the priorities in my base at the moment. Most things are level 5, level 4, and the occasional level 6. That's all you need. And this cuts down on lots of lots of unnecessary clicking. If you've got to keep changing everything to level 6 or level 7 or level 8 just to make sure that it's serviced in time, you're, you're just wasting lots of mouse clicks and micromanaging to get something done. Don't bother. Just use this relatively simple system. Now, I know it looks horrible when you look at, like, look at it like this way. There's so many X's everywhere and so many up and down arrows, and it does look rather confusing to start with. But just remember, diggers plus one to digging and building. And usually those dugs will have a, an extra skill like art or research or operate. Actually, art, research, and operate all right beside each other. Those are the three bonus attributes you'll give to builders and diggers. But that's it. Everything else is basically taken care of by either a dedicated rancher or a dog's body does the whole rest of it. By just having dedicated duplicates that do the jobs, you're allowed to just use level five commands everywhere. And one thing to remember is dig commands, they're not gonna interfere with your dog's bodies. As we've covered in priorities, they're, they're gonna ignore no matter what, you can have a level nine dig command and your dog's body won't even look at it. If there is a deodorizer on the opposite side of the map that needs a top up, he'll do that first. So you can then use the full gamut of actual priorities. When I'm building or digging, just say in the space biome, I can lay down a floor at level five, lay down a roof at level six, and that will make sure that every time a roof tile is available to be placed, they'll place it, just to make sure that they cover themselves from the meteors in time. I can place level five build commands in one area, and then while that's building, I can then place level four build commands in a second area, which will mean they won't actually get around to those until they finish the whole first project, which is in a separate section. It allows me to queue up a build in one area and then queue up a second build in another area, knowing it will not interfere with the first build. Use the full priority system to your advantage and take advantage of all the numbers. I see too many people who just only use seven, eight, and nine, and that's it. Default to five, you have plenty of room for fours and even threes. In fact, uh, the ones and twos are what kill me because you need to leave uh, one and two available for the following systems. These ones here. Uh, anytime you're, you're going to be using auto sweepers with uh, conveyor receptacles, the conveyor receptacle has to be set to level one, and then whatever you're going to transfer the goods to has to be set to level two. This kind of means one and two are taken by these. You can't use the one and two commands for pretty much anything else, or they're going to be competing with these, which means you've only really got three and four to work with. It's kind of weird not having enough lower commands. But I've used this system from start to end. I found no real downsides or problems to it. The only thing you'll have to worry about is getting, making sure that you stop building and digging every so often to make sure you can stockpile some goods. 
here is a power supply system and it's got a storage bin in the middle of it and an auto sweeper above it. Even if the auto sweeper wasn't there, every so often I would stop and restock this so that my internal dog's body can come along and use the coal in here to top up these coal generators. All you're trying to do is get the bulk of the resources necessary for your system stockpiled beside it. And that means whenever it does request something and it gets serviced, a duplicate can come along, pick up 1.8 tons out of here and dump it straight in. So it can be done quickly and efficiently. Now, there are going to be instances where you're not going to have a chance to Swiss cheese the floor to say get debris out of an area and in those instances you will have to do a sweep command so how do we get it operated on well the first thing to do is just minimize travel distance normally what i do is i'll just stick uh, a bunch of storage containers nearby you'll see lots of random ones scattered about the place and uh, then what i do is i will effectively put them on sweep all and priority two and then i will do the sweep command say to clean out this area here because i'm trying to clean it up before i, I seal up the whole area and then all of the sweep command, all the debris that's in here will get swept up into these storage containers. That's it. Once once the sweeping is done, I will default this back to level one. And well, sorry, I'll leave that at level one and that makes sure it won't interfere with the next sweep command I do somewhere else. So when you're doing sweep commands, don't don't have them sweeping it back to a centralized storage area. A centralized storage area is actually bad. Uh, well, hear me out here. All that stuff lying around on the ground, the igneous rock, the granite, the gold amalgam, all that stuff lying around the map, it's basically building materials. And having that scattered around the map is not a bad thing because any construction projects nearby can simply draw from those resources. The only time you really want to centralize it is later in the game when it starts to affect performance and drop your frame rates. Up until that point, you don't really care. And to actually centralize them at the end you you really don't want to be using sweep commands normally what i do is i put down storage bins uh these ones i've yeah so i put them on level two or level three and they basically get topped up and filled that way and this centralizes them wherever they, i put the storage bins i don't even use sweep commands i just use storage bins with a priority setting this is all going to be really ultra late game though by and large you're not going to be doing sweep commands in probably the first 800 to a thousand cycles or cleaning up the map commands until the uh, eight or 800 to 1,000 cycles in. So how many of each of these do you need? How many dogs? How many dogs bodies? How many beasties? Well, all depends on how many, how much, say, beasties, how many critters you're running. For every 12 critters, you need one beastie. Uh, how many dogs bodies? This really depends on how much farming you're doing. Uh, since my beasties are providing most of the actual raw materials, my dog's body does not have to do a lot of farming, so I actually stick with one dog's body in and one dog's body out, uh, up as far as 12 duplicates, and I had no issues. In fact, I'm on more than that now, and I'm still running it, but most of those spend, they, they spend most of their time in rockets. I'm doing some modifications at the moment. So normally, up until 12 duplicates, two dog's bodies, and in and out, and that worked just fine for me. All the rest are dogs. Just lots and lots of dogs. Um... I've got a, a few new dogs bodies I've brought in in the last uh, few cycles, but that's basically because I'm cleaning up the map and I just wanted some new trainees to help out. But yeah, it's going to be pretty much a case of if you run a different style to me, which let's face it, most people run their own style. You'll have to figure out how many of each you're going to be running. But by and large, one dog's body can take care of a base. Uh, the beasties, you know, and the dig dogs is pretty much everyone else. You pretty much want all dogs for everything that's not taking care of the, the minor stuff. Just remember to stop them occasionally and you'll be good to go. So, I mean, stop your build dig projects occasionally to stock up some uh, some storage containers and you should be good to go. And that's it. Specialize your duplicates, get them to do the jobs you want. And that's actually, not only that, it allows you to specialize your duplicates in jobs. For example, your, your dig dugs, well, they're going to be prioritizing the uh, apprentice architecture and the seasoned miner. They're going to be going into these areas. Now, of course, all of them will be getting career. Your Tinkerers are going to be going straight into general engineering, uh, electrical engineering, mechatronics engineering. They're going to be getting all the tinkering bonuses. So this allows you to specialize them in the specialization of skills along with the specialization of jobs allows you to get more efficient duplicates that do their jobs better and faster. It, it really just gives focus. Now, I I have renamed them this way, like uh, uh, all the dogs are Bill Diggs. I, I gave myself names so that I could remember exactly what jobs they were doing and then just with a quick glance i know what i should be training them in next actually i almost called uh, dogs buddies uh, mom because they did all those jobs but 
yeah, it sort of led to too many instances where you could use your mom joke, so uh, I avoided that. But yeah, just give them a name that associates them with the task, like beasties for ranchers, that kind of thing. And it usually makes it much easier to realize, yeah, this is what they do. This is what their priorities are set to. And it really makes sure that you hone them in on the skills that are, they are going to be using. Yeah. So as a final note, give this system a try. Uh, the new patches come out. Lots of people are starting new games. Maybe it's time to try uh, developing a habit that I consider to be a good one. It will result in much more efficient gameplay and it makes your duplicates do what you want when you want it done. Just make sure to spread your dugs out across several cycles or several schedules so that they're not all stacked up on top of each other. You, you kind of want everyone digging or building, you know, constantly throughout the day. So you, you don't have any downtime where no one's doing anything. It affects gameplay, but give it a try. See what you think of it. Maybe you can find some modifications that improve on it. If you do, just let us know and uh, I'll do an update to this at some point.